coming up on 25 years now since the abduction of Ojalan. And the forces that are behind the abduction of Ojalan, you're absolutely right, are some of the imperial forces in the world today. There is the interesting uh, uh, aside of the fact that in the northeast of Syria, there's a coalition between Kurdish forces inspired by Ojalan and the United States. But that, if we bracket that, we see that behind the uh, international conspiracy is NATO. We have in the in the news nowadays, obviously the uh, the war on Palestine, the ethnic cleansing or genocide on Palestine, and uh, that is also backed up by the United States with its with its partner Israel. The capture of Ojalan, I think, is, uh, is telling because it shows the way in which the imperial powers work together, and also the ways in which they conceive of Ojalan's alternative as very dangerous. So uh, dangerous to the status quo uh, because he is not because he's 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 a key role player in a call for peace, but he also has a idea of what an alternative to this imperial order could look like, which uh, goes by the name, various names, but sometimes sometimes we call it democratic confederalism. I do think it's a it's a it's a choice on the part of Turkey uh, to uh, impose an exceptional regime upon Ojalan, and then there's been a kind of that Imrali imprisonment is a is a paradigm for the uh, for the uh, repression of the Kurdish movement. Now. Uh, it, it, there, it, like I say, Ojalan remains a key role player in a peace project, a, a peace process that could happen. And in that respect, uh, Ojalan remaining outside of the rule of law uh, in uh, Emrali is is a, is symbolic of the uh, uh, atrocities that are that are reaped, reaped upon the Kurds. I think that there are limits to what the Western powers are willing to do. Uh, we see uh, just recently a former uh, head of the CPT, the Committee on the Prevention of Torture, has come out and said uh, that it called for an end to Ojalan's isolation. So there are have been some some minimal steps by the international community to try to enforce uh, uh, some sort of legal or law-abiding standards, but obviously the inhumane treatment of Ojalan uh, remains in place and the would-be imperial powers remain, uh, let's say, uh, uh, they they do what they can not to upset their, their trading partner, Turkey. So... Um, so yeah, so that so I think part of the 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 issue with uh, the the international order is that it's been very weak in its attempts to uh, alter the situation in Raleigh. I mean, I think that the 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 Ojalan is uh, uh, an amazing figure. Uh, version of a capitalist of, of capitalist modernity versus what he calls democratic modernity i think is uh very inspiring for those of us who are searching for an alternative to the uh, catastrophic uh, dynamics of capitalist modernity i think ojalan uh is uh uh, has a very important contribution and i think again that's part of the reason why people see him to be so dangerous he's like a match that the the lit, lit, lit a flame and uh, for that reason, he he his suffering is seen as the embodiment of the of suffering of the Kurdish people. His sacrifices, the embodiment of the sacrifices of the Kurdish people. Uh, but at the same time, he's more than just a, a national uh, hero. He also, uh, due to his voluminous writings on uh, on democratic modernity or democratic confederalism also is a leading thinker with respect to what the alternative to capitalist modernity can be. And so he captures the imagination, not only of the Kurdish masses, but also of a lot of uh, radicals around the globe. I, I was uh, uh, on these Imrali delegations that I went on and the, the one of my first, my, my first book on the subject on uh, uh, your freedom and mine uh, is dedicated to Judge Essa Musa, who was Nelson Mandela's lawyer. And Judge Essa M Musa was involved in spearheading these de delegations to Turkey. He was very much convinced that Ojalan could play a role very similar to the role played by Nelson Mandela in the end of the apartheid regime. 
So given his charismatic appeal and the fact that he has the vision that he has, I think he's a, a crucial role player. And one might think that the that um, the Turks have ne have have never dared to kill him. Um, and but they but they isolate him and they think by isolating him they can they could they can silence his message but they can't silence his message but he's not immortal and it's very important that he be released for a for a peace process to be to to be culminated in fact and in fact if, if for any reason he is uh uh uh, the peace process doesn't happen while he's alive. I think it'll be very difficult for there to be a peace process. And so, uh, and in particular, to be able to situate the contribution of Ojalon within a broader frame of self-determination struggles and thinking about what, what democratic confederalism can mean in the 21st century. So there was a variety of different articles all moving towards this uh, this in pursuit of this democratic confederalist ideal, which Ojalan holds up. Uh, and uh, that was the idea behind the book is to really uh, flesh out what democratic confederalism can mean in the 21st century. Uh, the the motivation for writing the books was to was to contribute to the voices calling for uh, attention to be paid to the Kurdish freedom movement and the way in which the Kurdish freedom movement is uh, is opening up a space for thinking of an alternative to the catastrophic uh, crisis of capitalist modernity. Uh, Fortune to have been able to see what was happening in the northeast of Syria. I was invited on a delegation by my student Dilar Dirik. Uh, invited me on a delegation to Syria at the end of December of 2014 to see what was happening in Rojava. From there, I was brought into this uh, network of people who were mobilizing around the Kurdish freedom movement, and I was very impressed with what I saw. Uh, and uh, as I got more and more involved in uh, lobbying for Kur the for uh, the Kurdish cause, uh, both at the level of academia and also in the European Parliament, in the UK Parliament, in the Council of Europe, and the like. I felt like that that uh, the intellectual legitimation of the cause needs to be uh, uh, contributed to, and so I felt that the, by taking very seriously the ideas of the movement, uh, uh, that this is a way of legitimating and and, and strengthening the movement. Mm -hmm.